So um, here we can see I've brought my part back into uh, Creo, but let's take a look at what this process looks like uh, inside of Scenario. So we're going to end up at the end of this process with this nice uh, BRAP model that we can bring back into our CAD tool of choice uh, for this castable part here. Um, so let's go back to the very beginning of this process and take a look at how we start things out. Now, for those of you that this is your first time uh, seeing Scenario, um, what we have here is a visual programming environment for engineers. So on the left-hand side, we have the canvas, which contains all the nodes where we're going to construct our workflow. And on the right-hand side, um, we actually have the viewport where we can start to see some of the three-dimensional geometry that we're creating, simulation results, uh, things of that nature. So we can, as we're designing these workflows, really understand what's going on uh, in our process here. And as I mentioned, um, you know, we have direct access to the Siemens Parasolid kernel, but we can import solid geometry in a variety of formats. In this case, I'm going to read it in in the native Parasolid format. So what does it look like if we want to go and start from this design space uh, with some non-design regions and taking it into a casted part in a workflow that's going to be replayable? So here we start out, um, you know, reading in loads and material definitions for not only our optimization process, but our validation process. Um, from an Excel file. In this case, we've actually uh, gone ahead and created our own function that we're going to use here. So I think the nice part about Scenario is, you know, if you're a company that does a lot of, um, you know, FEA analyses, um, you may be reading all of that data in from Excel files, and that can be a very manual and tedious process. And what we've done is we've actually gone ahead and created our own function again to automate that process. So I can just drop in my Excel file, and now it's going to take all of this data that that's contained within and automatically start uh, generating some of my uh, loads, boundary conditions, and things of that nature. So we can see this is the Excel file um, spreadsheet that we start with that contains all of this information um, that's going to go uh, into our optimization and validation process. So again, that's, you know, um, with Scenario, because it's a visual programming environment, you can take advantage of that to not just create workflows, but create these little snippets that you can reuse in your process and make your life easier. So we start out by importing loads, material definitions, and our design space. And again, all of this is going to be replayable. So if we want to swap out different geometries and things like that, it's really easy to do so. As we move through our process here, we can see it's really nicely documented. So we understand exactly what's going on uh, at each step of the process. Uh, and the next stage, we're going to start to generate uh, meshes for our parts. And again, um, you know, one of the tedious things uh, folks often tell me about is, you know, we have to go back and reapply mesh settings and things like this in our analysis, pro uh, analysis processes. And here, all of that's really contained within. So if you want to start adjusting settings, um, all of that's really possible. So let's go ahead and turn off the view of our other parts here, and we can see We've generated a solid mesh here. I've got this internalized, so we don't have to sit through the process um, of generating it live on this webinar. But um, the nice thing I wanna show off here is that we do have access to a variety of solid meshing tools from different vendors. So whether your you know, preference is HyperMesh or ANSA, or you wanna use our built-in uh, solid mesher as well, we really have that flexibility to start to plug and play different components uh, within your process here. So, and we can see, you know, we end up with different geometries uh, in the process of generating the mesh here. Now we go through and we start to construct the parts that we're actually going to use for the simulation analysis, uh, generating some of the contact definitions. And now, again, all of this is tied back to the Excel file that we used before, creating this um, nice setup of the workflow that's going to be ultimately replayable as we may change geometries here. Uh, again, we have access to defining contacts, RBEs to create these connections uh, within our component. All of this is fully possible inside the Scenario environment, but maybe let's uh, jump down into the workflow a little bit further so we're not just talking only about the setup of the uh, analysis, but let's get into what we've got here. So 
after we've defined our loads or boundary conditions, um, we're going to be able to then uh, look at the results of this analysis that we've already done here. Let's turn this on and let's uh, take a look. I think if we look at our different uh, lo load cases here, we should be able to see um, the stress results um, in the different areas of the component. So we're going to do the validation uh, ahead of time, and then we're going to get into the uh, optimization process. And again, all of this is tied together, and we're going to go ahead and reuse the components that we already did for the validation to start to set up our optimization. Um, obviously, with designing uh, a casted part, you know what's going to be of interest for us is defining things like the draw direction. Um, for this part, it's going to be a rather simple uh, cast apart, but you can imagine as we get more complex, you may have multiple draw directions uh, playing into the design of this component. So here we've gone ahead and, you know, we're able to, in the visual environment, to set up the, the draw direction. In this case, it's going to be the negative Z direction. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at our topology optimization setup. So. Again, this is another component where, you know, we know we're going to be doing this optimization process a number of times, and we've simplified the process by setting up this uh, little snippet here where we can just play with a, a certain amount of parameters uh, that we want to do to set up this analysis. And we can go ahead and uh, take a look at what this looks like. Um, so it's actually, you know, multiple steps in the process that we're going to go ahead and, and export out. So it's um, setting up our topology optimization variables. So what is this design space that we're going to be working with? What are the optimization uh, parameters that we want? In this case, we're going to go for a volume fraction response. And then what are the different load steps that we're going to include um, in the optimization process? And in the end, what it's going to do is run the, in this case, we're going to use Optistruct, but again, we've, we've got access to uh, Hexagon uh, Amendate topology optimization as well. So we could simply swap out and switch out some of these different constraints uh, within our optimization process and swap between solvers really to provide you full flexibility where you've designed the workflow and now you want to change out different components here. In this case, we've got the optimization results already saved in so that we're not going to sit through the process of generating, generating OptiStruct results. But a nice uh, little thing here, again, we don't want to be playing with all of these parameters in our process. Um, it gives us the flexibility to then just say, OK, I'm only going to play with certain uh, variables as we go through the optimization process. And let's take a look at what some of the results uh, we get out of this are. So here we can see the, the densities um, from the optimization process. Let's take a look. You um, may be able to do a little bit of filtering and see those result bounds. Just so we get a better idea of what our part is going to look like as we uh, extract the, um, the ISO surface from this. So in this case, we're going to uh, extract the ISO surface. We can see we end up now with this uh, region of our design space. But we don't have any of the connection points that we initially had defined in the CAD geometry. We're going to have to go back and add those in. Uh, you know, with a traditional tool, you may have to go in and do mesh booleans. But because we have parasolid uh, baked in here, we can go ahead and, uh, after we re remesh this geometry, simply boolean back in some of those components. Or in this case, we're going to do a little bit more on the design side of things because we have that casting direction. We really want to make a castable part here and not have some of this rugged, um, rugged surface. Uh, mesh on the inside here. So let's step through a few of these um, steps here in the process. We're going to go ahead and remesh it and end up with really, a really nice, uh, clean uh, surface mesh. And then this is where we're going to start to play with uh, creating the castable geometry. So in this case, you know, for this family of parts, we've decided we want to start to extract some of the section curves of this geometry and start to use some of the solid modeling capabilities to extrude um, those section curves and create this nice castable part. So let's take a look. We'll turn off the view of our mesh. 
So we can see we've extracted one curve and another curve, and we have that draw direction again. And so now we're going to be able to start to um, do some of the extraction of those uh, surfaces to generate our solid geometry. So let's take a step further. And so here we, we're going to go ahead and again, I'll turn on the visibility here. We can see we end up with now a nice BREP looking model from these curves um, that we've extracted. And then we still need to add in our uh, different surfaces, or in this case, we're going to subtract out a section of the geometry, but let's, let's jump further along and take a look at doing some of these Boolean operations and intersections. Again, because Parasolid is, is baked in here, uh, it allows us the capability to really tailor this workflow. So we can start to see we're re-adding back in some of the, the functional surfaces that we had before, then intersection. And then if we start to do a union of some of our non-design spaces, we end up with a part that looks pretty nice. But of course, to make this a bit more castable, we want to add in some fillets and end up with our final geometry. And you know, at the end of this process, we need to go ahead and extract this and bring it back into our CAD tool. So you know, we can take directly back in a step file. In this case, we're going to export with the latest format, AP242. And as I showed at the start, you know, we've got this already added back uh, inside of Creo. And then we can take this back into some of our downstream uh, processes there. So hopefully this gave you guys a, a, a nice a short overview of how we can start to take advantage of some of the capabilities inside of Scenario to not just go from a mesh to a CAD file, but really create a workflow, create a process to construct a part in the manner that's going to fit your needs so that you end up with really truly manufacturable geometry that fits back into your product design processes and back into your native CAD tools. Mm -hmm.